Hi all, welcome to Code with Friends. Uh, so in the today's uh, tutorial, we are just going to see about the CSS. So I think in the previous tutorials, you can just have me previously uploaded videos where I have like put a detailed information on the HTML. So in both Tamil and English, it is available. So I just given a little introduction to HTML, very basic tags that are used for the website development. So today I'm just going to help you out like how to style uh, like with help of the HTML, how to apply styles to the HTML, we are going to see in the today's tutorial. So uh, let me start before going into the coding part or like live example. I just wanted to tell you like what does mean by CSS. So I think CSS full form is nothing but cascading style sheet. So what does mean by CSS? So CSS is one which gives the styles to your web page. So for example, let me open Amazon.in website. So when I see this, this looks, this, this background color is blue. If you see black, this background color, if you see it's like a thick blue. If you see this background color is white. Uh, if you see like the color of the text is white color. Uh, like if you see this color of text is black color. So how do you achieve? With plain HTML, you can just bring up that black color one. Like you can just uh, Add, but like how do you add the colors to it so how do you like add the font size to it so how do you like add the font styles font families so how do you add those kind of things so we can achieve everything with help of just styles so styles is nothing but which gives the attraction to your website so html is one like where you can create the elements if you wanted to add the styles to that elements we can achieve it with help of the css so i just wanted to show you where the css uh, like you can see in this by inspecting your element by pressing control shift i so where you can see the css of your particular web pages you can go to this elements so here you'll be able to find the uh, tags document elements and all so hover on any of the tags so when you click this is an anchor tag so here you can see the styles part so here you'll be able to see what are the styles you have applied to particular tag okay so now let us see the example so let me start by creating a uh, button. So there is a button tag. So which is button slash button. I just created a button. So this tag is nothing but it acts like a button tag. It's, it's, it acts like a button. So now let me create the button name as sign. Okay. So if you see this is a button, but as I told you, HTML is just a static page. If you wanted to like make this button a clickable button, for example, when I click on the sign in button, like this button like redirects to some pages. So these functionalities cannot be achieved with plain HTML. So these functionalities can be achieved with help of adding JavaScripts or like to your HTML, you can add the JavaScript and you can achieve these kind of functionalities. But like we will see how to apply styles to it. So now here is a button component. So the sign component. So here I just wanted to help you with writing a good styles. Good styles in the sense like you can add styles, but uh, I, I, I just wanted to tell you like when you work on a long project like a length project or like big project and all there will be multiple folders. So when there are multiple folders it's always good to maintain a separate style sheet file and use that style sheet file in your particular page. So for example here if you see there is a styles.css which is being created uh, over here. So styles or CSS file is there. So here there is an index.html1. So here, if you have noticed, like here there is a link, op link option. So you have to give the relevance equals to style sheet and type is text equal to CSS. So in this H references, you have to give your styles.css name. So whatever the folder name you have created, you have to give. So basically in this page, whatever styles I am writing, that will be getting reflected over here in the index.html which means that whatever the styles you are writing over here you can use it in this index.html file for that particular reason only this link relevance uh, tag is being used and one more thing i just wanted to point out over here is so whatever name you are giving here you have to just give the exact name to link the style sheet to your index.html in such scenario in case if i am uh, like giving this as uh, index dot CSS. So in that scenario, this reference name also will be this reference name also will be index dot CSS. Okay. So now 
let's start like how to write the styles so now i just i am just going to tell you how to color this button and how to give the background color button if you see by default it is showing me gray color but i don't want it to give the gray color so like then how we can give a different colors we'll be seeing that fine so now uh, let me tell you there are three different ways of applying styles uh, like when you see even you can add a inner styles but today i'm just not going to tell about the inner styles i'm just going to give you the adding styles in a separate page only and like even i will tell you one more way is there so even you can add style like this style tag and opening and closing of style tag and inside this style tag you can write whatever you are writing in this index.css file you can write it here as well but why i am telling you by creating a separate folder means because that is a good practice to use and that is the easiest way also when you use when you go for creating long long projects but even you can create a style and close the style like this and even you can use in between this line number 7 and 8 you can write all your styles but the, i won't advise doing that i always advise you like when because when you practice from now that will be like helping you whenever you uh, create any files you would be like automatically practice to create a separate css file and use it over your application okay so now i will tell you like how to uh, apply the styles to this button tag so there are three different types of selectors so one selector is class selector and the other selector is id selector and the other selector is type selector so if you see there are three different types of selectors one is class and the other one is id and the third one is type selector so let's see what is meant by class selector so class selector is nothing but so for here i am just going to add a class name called sign in okay so now i have just added a class name to this let me have one more button as well with class equals to let's name the button as sign up so i just created two different buttons one is sign in button and the other button is sign up button so now like i have just added the class names to it so now like how do you write the style it's very simple so in the index.css file so when you are using class selector you have to use the dot operator so just keep a dot operator and whatever the class name whichever you have given you can just copy this class name and you can paste it over here so and after like writing there should be a dot operator and after that the class name whatever you are uh, you have given and after that you can just open and close this curly braces it's very simple that's it so this is how you create a css this this is how the simple css syntax for class selector is so now inside this curly braces you can write whatever styles you wanted to add so i'll just show you in this here like let me show you uh, css properties so like because you it's it's not like you should memorize the css properties initially it will be difficult for you to remember all the css properties reference so you can just go and google it when you are working for initially you can google it like uh, how to add uh, a background color or image in css so it's it's not bad okay like it's not bad like because google is the one which gives us all the informations and all the support you can just google each and everything to uh, get the property name initially like you can do that but when you practice automatically you will be getting to used to it okay so if you see like you can just open and see here like what is the property name it's like you see it's a background image and if you see the property for background color is background color so like what i am just going to do i am just going to select the sign in button with background color background color and just going to add it as uh, blue okay let me save this way so can you see now the sign in button has a background color of blue color so this is how you add the styles so now like i need a color of white okay 
so this color will be the text color because if you see the blue color and the black color is not contrasting it's not good so i just added the white color uh, to the text so initially when you are working for example if you don't know what is the property name just go and google like uh, how to add background color how to add text color inside the button so automatically you will be finding the property's name uh, so that's not a problem at all so you can like when you are working initially pra practicing like you can just give like this and you can browse and you can find the solution so this is fine so this is about the sign in class so now to the sign up i think we have created a one more class called sign up so you have to use a dot operator write the class name and like well open and close the curly braces so here comes a background color and even there is one more property called background even this background also will apply the same uh, background color only so let me give this blue violet color and let me give the color as white okay so this is how you have to add the styles uh, to your html page or tags whatever you have created so this is called class character so now what does mean by class character so very simple you have to create an attribute name with class equals to you can give your class name then you have to use the dot operator you have to use the dot operator to write the styles okay so dot operator followed by dot operator comes the class name and followed by that you have to just open and curly braces and you just going to write the styles over there this is about the class selector so now the next thing is id selector so what is meant by id selector so that is also very simple so here i am just going to add a id call sign in okay so now and it's very simple so this is the id which i have created so i'm just going to remove this uh, class whatever you have written it's very simple if it is a class you have to use the if it is a class you have to use a dot operator if it is an id it's very simply you have to use this hashtag symbol followed by that the id name okay so that's it so that's the difference between the class selector and the id selector so id selector means you have to use that hashtag symbol instead of dot operator you have to use this hashtag operator and you have to give the uh, id name and same that's it like as usual you open and close the curly braces and you write all the styles in it but here i just wanted to tell you one more thing uh, like what is the difference between id and class so basically the id should be always unique which means that you cannot have a duplicate ids so for example i'll just give you a scenario so for example here that uh, in in my scenario consider that like both the buttons also we need the same color so we have a requirement like that so in that case like i can have a sign up uh, simple like consider that like let me remove the id atom now so i can have a simple sign like this simple class common class and i can use that common class to color or uh, to color both the buttons so consider my requirement is something like sign in button and sign up button both should be same color so in that scenario i can use the common class names and like i can color i can color that button but you should not use common ids so you you cannot use id equal to sign and again an id equals to sign like this but you if you add and uh, if you like apply this hashtag symbol that is gonna work it i i won't tell it's not gonna work you can add the hashtag sign symbol like this you can remove this class name as well that will color the button but that's not a good practice the reason is when you add the interaction which means like as i told id should be always unique so uh, it it actually the id determines the unique elements that are present in the dom so consider that in future on click of the sign in button you need to redirect this to some page you need something to happen some dynamically some changes to happen in your page so in that scenario what happens if you click on this button so basically in javascript we'll be dealing everything with help of ids only for example if i click on this with help of the id i'll fetch and i will open the page or redirect it to the page so if you are like giving the same id sign in so in this scenario what will happen you cannot because sign in has a different functionality sign up has a different functionality 
when you click on sign in that you that helps the user to log in and be and redirected to the home page or like redirect to the main page but sign up is something like it, it helps the user to create the new account to log in to that particular website so in that scenario id should be unique only you cannot handle both the functionalities with same ids so it's it, in index.css it will work but that is not a good practice to use it okay so this is the difference between id selector and the class selector so ids are ids is something like this should be always unique and ids selector you can give the id name you can use this hashtag operator and followed by the hashtag operator same syntax syntax will be same hashtag and the id name the id name whatever you are creating and you can have this open and close curly braces to write it okay so the next comes a type selector so type selector is very very simple so you don't have to write anything over here like let me remove this up out and let me it's very simple you can just write the tag name so what is the tag name here the tag name is button so you can just write the button here straight away the tag name so that's gonna uh, like add the styles to the tag so what it will do it will search the tag with name button so whichever tag which is named as button so that will be like this particular styles will be applied this two properties but like in case in your scenario you have like two buttons and if you wanted both the buttons to have the same functionality like sorry same colors you can straight away use this type selector and like if you have different uh, scenarios like one button should be one color and other button should be other color you can go for as i told you can go for the class selector itself so the in most of the scenarios you'll be using class selectors only because that's a good practice to use class selector and even you can use type selectors as well okay so these are three different selectors so in case of type selector it is nothing but the tag name tag is nothing but like your html tag name so followed by that like uh, it's very simple you have to just give the tag name and you can open the open and curly braces and you can write the styles attributes whichever you want to write so this is about the selectors so there are i'll repeat again there are three different types of selectors one is class selector type selector and id selector for class selector you have to use dot operator type selector you have to use hashtag and for type selector you have you can straight away go for the tag name itself okay so now i'm going to show you one more uh, functionality like for style so let me create a simple division okay with tag name as high so let me open this website in the new page because like uh, this is a very very basic if you wanted to move the elements if you wanted to like uh, move it from one place to another it's a very very important part that you should know so we call it as a box model property so a box model is nothing but whenever you create any element you can create any tag any elements whenever you create so a box model like this will be created if you see a box model like this will be created so here since i have just given a division okay let me uh, yeah so here let me hover on this high so this is a division which is being created can you see this is a division which is being created if you see a box model is created over here so now what i am going to do i am just going to create a class equals to container okay and i am just going to add a subject to it i am just going to give width as 100 px height as these are two different attributes so which defines the height and width of the element and i am just going to give the background color to be red fine so yeah so now like this is how it looks right so well i am just given 100 px if you see i have given the height to be 100 px and the background color to be red so don't worry if you don't know what is in by px so you can like uh, whenever you work with the styles to mention the size so we give it in percentage you can give it in percentage 
you can give it in pixels which is px you can give it in em you can give it in rem as well so if you see like this px is nothing but i'll just show you one px in centimeter if you see one px in centimeter will be like 0.0, .0 to centimeter but you don't have to worry about these calculations those kind of things because always you i as i told you in the previous uh, tutorials you just click on this okay after clicking on this use this up arrow and down arrow to adjust the width based upon your need it's it's not necessary that you have to do the exact calculations and all like you can just play it here in the by inspecting you can just change it over here and you can just fix your uh, width and height of your screens whatever however you wanted to so now here i just given a basic width so width is nothing but it is i think everyone knows this is the width and this is the height so here i was given 100 px width but i think everyone remember whenever you apply the display block property your entire screen size will be occupied by the division since i have given this 100 px this 100 px but still the screen size will be that much but that element will take only the 100 uh, pixels of your uh, width so here if you notice here it is there 100 into 100 which is width into height so now here comes the main thing the box model if you have noticed there is margin border padding i just want to give you a simple example i think everyone would have like come across this 10th and 12th standard max subjects like why i'm doing this max subject means when i studied uh 10th and 12th so i had unruled note for max and ruled note for all the other subjects so so there won't be any margins in, margins in the unruled note most of the times so what i we used to do like we used to like uh, add a margin by giving a uh, long border in the pencil or scale by using the scale so you can use the same imagination of example for this so margin is nothing but like you are giving some margin uh, like leaving some space from left i think in ruled note we leave from left left side we leave some space and we just put the line to look it good right so same example you can take it for here so margin is nothing but like where you give some space okay giving some space uh, to left stop or bottom so now there is a css property to that so let me start with margin just going to put hyphen so there are four attributes one is top left right and bottom if you want the margin in the left side you can mention it left if you want the margin space in top you can mention it as top bottom same way you can mention it as bottom right but here as you notice in left side it is sticked to the screen top it is sticked to the screen if you see the right side you have enough space and even in the uh, bottom you have enough space so it's not necessary to give the space in the uh, bottom and the right side so i'm just going to give it as left so i'm just going to start with one px can you see this box element is moving sorry this box element is moving so let me increase it can you see it is creating a space can you notice See, here I have given 100 px space. It is creating 100 px space from the left side. So, here in the box model, if you notice, you could see this 100 px, uh, like which is the space that has been created from the left side to this particular division. The space has been created. So, this is how you create a space and you move the elements. So, now let me bring it to back to some less px itself. That's fine. So, now let me add a margin top so same as the start of 2px so i'm just moving it can you see in the top side let me reduce this instagram so can you see in the top side it is moving so if you see in the top side it has created 46 ps px space and in the left side it has created 28 px space so this is we call it as like how you space with help of the margin okay so first part, part is over margin and consider that you in, in uh, for example in a scenario i'm just giving you an example so if you wanted to create a uh, straight away like this margin uh, in, in your consider if you have come across some scenario like where margin top left bottom right everything is same you can just put margin 10 px like this so what happens in the scenario margin top will be applied to 10 px margin left will be applied to 10 px margin bottom will be applied to 10 px even the margin right will be applied to 10 px okay 
So since the screen size is restricted, you are not able to see the exact size. Everything is considered as a margin space to the right side. So this is how you give the margin. If you give a margin, it will be applied to all the things. If you wanted to specifically apply, you have to use this margin top, margin left, margin right, and margin bottom according to top left, right, or bottom according to your need. Okay. So this is about the margin. So now next, let us go to the uh, border. So if you see after margin comes the border. So border is nothing but same in your 12th, uh, in your max mode, you used to put like line, right? Same, that's a border. So same here also, it appears uh, common for everything, which is like a border top, border bottom, border left and the border right. It's very common, even for margin, even for border, even for padding. This top, bottom, left, right, everything will be a common syntax. Okay. So now here, if I give a border top, it will be applied only to the top of the border. Same way, if you give border left, it will be applied only to the left side. If you give border bottom, it will be applied only to the bottom of the border. If you give border right, it will be applied only to the right side. The border will be applied only to the right side. So now I'll just give a general border. I wanted to apply for all border left, right, everything. So this has a separate syntax. So the syntax is you have to give the size. First is size. So one px. Next, there are different types of border names. So I'm just going to give solid here. <clears throat> and there is one more thing. If you see that when you give solid, it has come like that. So next is like color. I wanted for this red color, I think green will look kind of good. So green color. So same wise, you can increase this border size. See, I just given two pairs. If you see here, this border two will be applied to top, uh, bottom, left, and right. So border two pairs to all the sides. So this is about the border. But specifically, as I told you, if you need only this border top, border bottom, you can use specifically for that. There are a lot of attributes like not only solid. There is uh, other thing called border. There are lots of properties. So see, if you see now this dotted has come like a dotted margins. There are like many margins types which are available. So let me show you. So border in CSS. So if you go see here, there are a lot of types of border attributes which are available. If you see, these are uh, da dotted, dashed, solid, double, group. These are a lot of properties are there. So if you come across some scenario, you can use uh, whatever like you want. Okay, or dash. So dash means if you see it comes like a dash, 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 dash border. So if you have come across some scenarios, however you wanted to use, you can use. Like if you come across some scenarios, like you have to use this, this outline border. If you come across some scenarios, like if you wanted to use this border, if you... See, this is like, I think this is, this is like, uh, you wanted to have like hidden. So you can have like many styles, like border style, rich, border style, inside. there are a lot of, lot of styles. So you can like use these, like according to your usage, however you wanted to. So here is the result. If you see double outline is there, here it is single outline, here it is like, it is creating some buttons, like input box kind of thing, which is like dot, dashed solid, dotted dashed solid. So you can use a lot of uh, these things like based upon your uh, scenario user. Okay. So as I told you, first comes the margin, next comes the border, and the next comes the padding. So what does this padding do? Is it applies the styles to the inner elements. What does it mean by inner elements? Means I'm just going to give padding here. So if you see, it will apply. Uh, for example, I have this high, right? It will be applied to that high. If you see now. The space will be moving like this. Can you see uh, as I increase? But here, if you notice, the width is not increasing. Okay, uh, it is a padding space. If you if you notice, this this is nothing but a padding space. Whatever it has been created, that is not the width and height. Since the padding comes after the margin, that padding space will take the same color as whatever you have given for the division background. It will take the same color, but uh, as you notice, uh, it won't uh, uh, increase the width size. The width size will be same 100 into 100 px only. So this is the box model property. First comes the margin, next comes the border, next comes the padding, 
and the last but not the least, which is the width and height of the of your screen. So whenever you create any element uh, in uh, HTML, so this basic uh, this box model is common for all the elements. If you wanted to move the elements, if you wanted to create spacing, if you wanted to add the borders, so you have to use a simple and uh, easiest way. Like you have to use this margin border padding and the, these kind of things to space your elements and move your elements and like play with your elements. Okay. So these are the two important things that you should very much important to know when you work with the styling. If you know these two attributes, like these two concepts, like selectors and box model property, you can like play with CSS easily. It means that you can design your style however you want it. So this box model property margin, and next comes the border, and next comes the padding, and last but not least the width and height of your screen okay so this is a very simple thing in css you have to know these two things if you know these two things you can easily style and move the uh, uh, elements based upon your need and there are a lot of other things on styling as well like positioning and also like uh, uh, there are other such attributes as well and there are combinations of selectors is also is there uh, and there are like other CSS property like flex properties and there are like media queries in CSS. There are a lot of things in CSS but I just wanted to give you a today a like little basic about the CSS which you wanted to know. So in the next uh, part I'll also explain you the flex and positioning in the future tutorials. So you always stay tuned with me so that like I'll just go gradually uh, from HTML or uh, like by basic HTML, basic CSS and then I will just go to the next level of advanced like little advanced HTML and little advanced CSS. Once after finishing these both also I will give you all combined together a single tutorial where you, we can design a like a website kind of thing. So please stay tuned like uh, to watch all of my tutorials and uh, videos thank you thank you